Hello there fellow NPCs, I am Carmen Scythe and today we're going to continue to play the ladder. And this will be the last episode for this year. Uh, so let's see just how far we're gonna get with the whole Luke Wright thing. Let's see. And let's go. So let's see, in the last episode we were just starting to play around with Kylie. Right, and we found Luke's, no, uh, Zack's eyes in under our bed. No, uh, in a box, specifically for us. We dropped it under the bed, that's what it was. I don't think I can spend any more time with Kyla considering how high strong I feel. So it is a good thing that Suarez came for her as soon as I called. Though it is earlier than the agreed upon time, he voices no complaints. The bastard even has a look of relief as soon as they left. Or at least they interpreted it as such from where I stood by one of the windows, not bothering to step out and greet the man. No doubt he still doesn't trust me around his spawn. Well, he has every right to be suspicious of me, I am a dangerous man after all. But to my chagrin, that leaves me with the rest of the day with nothing to do. Alright, October 31st, exactly. And this is the afternoon, so it's only a matter of hours, essentially, before... We uh, uh, collide with uh, feathers. Well, aside from picking up the mess Kyliff scattered about in the parlor, to my immense, immense relief, she remembered to take her doll with her this time. But the same cannot be said for the crayons and papers littered here and there. First things first, I snatch my own doodle off the table and rip it to shreds, leaving no hope that it will see the light of day. The rest of the drawing, all Kylie's, remains unharmed as I collect a, loot, collect a lot. Though they have been stacked neatly on the table before, they must have been blown about when I saw Kylie off. And there are plenty of them. From cats and cakes to colorful rainbows and gardens, the child managed to make a lot during the her morning here. There is uh, one more that I have to fish out of the fireplace where it landed. I don't like this sound. I did just check and it's... It's a background noise. It sounds like someone is outside my apartment and uh, using a lawnmower or something. Me. It's kind of annoying. It's not right now. Expecting to see another one of Kylie's masterpieces, I am instead greeted with something a bit more concerning. There is me and there is Kylie, the two of us, side by side and smiling as her as our stick figure selves stand in a nondescript field. That much I can ascertain without looking at the labels below the doodle's feet. But the, th but the third figure stands next to me in the drawing. A woman with a face hidden behind a curtain of black. Takako, the writing under her supplies. Says you're making a really funny face. One big happy family. That is fucking horrifying. Taco who? Takako, a friend I made. The hairs on the back of my neck stand on the end and I feel a chill go down my spine. A breath. That isn't mine. That has me turned around expecting, hoping to see someone. Anyone. But nothing. And that's when I hear it. Laughter, sweet and merry laughter ringing from the ballroom. Thinking about it has my cheeks burning and my blood running uh, hot. It's as if I'm being mocked. Are we gonna walk down into the ballroom and see a big fest uh, festivities with a bunch of dead people dancing? As I stomp towards the door I have to stop myself from shouting up a storm. I expect to see some of the help dallying about, idle from their duties. Perhaps they thought they can slack off in their duties without the head butler around them with my preoccupation with Kylie. Well, they had another thing coming. But again, nothing. Nothing from what I can see with a cursory glance, at the very, very least. I roam around, looking for the near impossible hiding places, and still, I am all alone. Yet I can still hear the laughter, the accursed laughter echoing about in the room, in my head. Who's there? Show yourselves and show some respect to the master of the house! He 
Can I sound drunk? Cold uneasiness settles into my, into my stomach when no one answers. I stumble on my own two feet, feeling a wave of nausea come from nowhere. I have to put a hand against the wall to stay upright when the world shifts and pain explodes from behind my eyes. Oh no, behind your eyes. I mean, that means headache, but it also could mean something is plopping your eyes out. It takes every ounce of my self-control not to heave then and there. The only thing my pride allows me to do is to close my eyes and attempt to alleviate some of the pain. Vague, unfamiliar images. There I say memories, not mine, flash in my head, unbidden and unwelcome. Like a strong hammer strike to the head, threatening to crack my skull and split it in two. Whatever emotions they hold are muted. I'm nothing but a spectator. Still, it always feels palpable. Though it doesn't take long for these sensations to get into my head, through my eyes and my ears it creeps and buzzes in the spaces between. Oh yeah! It hurts. This is a memory fragment. Does this mean that... You, and you are remembering this? Yeah. Question is, is this an actual memory of yours or is this something Takaku is putting into your head? Hi. She doesn't want this. You lacked care. You forget your place and you've indulged yourself far too much in this fantasy of yours. This is vile. Like vomit and sludge brushing against my skin before it covers me until I we until I'm weighted down. Disgusting. Wrong. Stop it! You've overstepped your boundaries and livery. I don't know what livery means though. Stop it. This is wrong. Please. May I remind you that you are nothing but a servant, a slave, an unattractive, unchaste harlot who thinks too much of herself. Please, no more. Yeah, this is the second one. Over and over, it hurts. The pain, however, is not overbearing or blinding. Oh, is that what's happening? Okay, so we only have these two pieces that we can see, because these are the two people who died. If we had seen more memory fragments, that would change Luke's personality much more uh, once we've done mem memorizing all this. Uh, so, yeah, of course, uh, not kill, not, uh, people not dying uh, ensures Luke is still the same person as he was as we know him. But the more people die, the more of his memories return. Ooh, memory fragments. Ooh. I was wondering why the hell they would show that, because we have nothing that... Uh, there is no hidden book or anything that shows these memories. It's just memory fragments, so this is cool. It is the lightest of cuts and the bruising of flesh by blunt force. It dribbles down my cheeks and my mouth. There is a pounding in my head. It is not blinding, but that makes it all starker. Everything hurts. Please, my lady. He need not suffer. I beg of you, have mercy. You already have me to do as you please. He deserves none of this. Why is this happening? Silence. Before I cut out that impertinent tongue of yours and feed it to the dogs. You will watch and you will learn what happens when I am displeased. What have I done to deserve this? One after the other, they come at me. An unending flood that threatens to sweep me, uh, sweep me away for what feels like an eternity. Each one. A show of both joy and suffering for those who have called this mansion their home. Each new scene is like a hammer to the head, threatening to crack my skull and split it in two. I can feel every little emotion in the blurry images that present itself in my head. I feel a part of these, like I've lived through them, though I know that is not possible. All their angers burn through me, that much is evident, but the pain, the pain more so. And above all, it, and above all of it are the whispers, the voices calling, luring until one image emerges in vivid contrast with others. 
when there's a shout of joy, my eyes snap open, looking for the culprit. That's when the whole room just changes. Everything is the same, yet everything isn't. In living memory. There are people everywhere, laughing and dancing. I should be concerned about them, but my mind is... But my mind finds it easy to dismiss them as they fade in and out of nothingness. Instead, I find my concentration drawn to a man and woman, though one can only call them lord and lady, going by their clothes. And, oh, just see how happy the couple looks. Though the man's eyes are eerily blank, like he's not there at all. Like he's not all there. His face is familiar though. In fact, they both are. I can't quite place why. The two make for a pretty picture as they dance in the center of the ballroom, even the phantom crowd's attention stay on them. It reminds me so much of Hana and I during the er our early day of our marriage. The honeymoon years, they call it. We were happy then too. All smiles and... All smiles and her sunshine, even with the normal dreary weather. Younger. We had less to worry about, or at least, thought that way. I thought, wished we could go on that day even with all that I did and had to do. But life has a way of catching up. There was work to be done. Although we had to stay the loving, perfect couple in public, I could not afford to look so weak. To appear tied down to someone else to those who knew who I really am. I had to harden my heart when I have business. But I hadn't always been so easy to just switch that part of me on and off. I should be concerned about their intrusion too. Ask what in bloody hell they are doing in my house, throwing a party as if they owned the place. Ask myself how the fuck I didn't notice of what was going on before, when the parlor and the foyer are both only two, a few doors away. It's a horrid feeling of envy. And though I have long accepted that I am a jealous person by nature, I have never felt such a strong feeling of envy as I have now. I, them. They, um, they were happy with each other, these people. But Han and I, envy turned into anger. Anger for something I could not have. But I have the feelings that yelling and screaming at them won't do much of anything anyway. None of the others have given me notice. I realized that this might not even be real. It dawns on me that these two are the people from the paintings. The ones all over the mansion. Which makes sense, I don't think I'm imaginative enough to make all of this up on, up on my own. This must be a dream. Or a really horrible high. Just then I can feel my eyes on me as I contemplate the absurdity of the situation. Yet I find difficulty in trying to tear my eyes away from the two dancing. I manage, and I regret looking away. The woman from the garden stands beside me. I can hear her rattling breath, menacing and shilling. Everything in, my, in me screams to run. But something pins me to the spot as she looks at me, watching, waiting. The clamor of the voices fills the ballroom. Although they say such welcoming words, I do not feel comforted by the madness I'm experiencing. The joyous voices turn sinister and foreboding to my ears. The chorus of people, people that shouldn't exist, threaten to overwhelm me, drown me even as I stand on dry land. The music still plays as the phantom quartet continues while I stand here, vulnerable and afraid. But the dance has already ended. And I am afraid that I might just be tonight's entertainment. Attention is all well and good until bollocks like this go down. These phantom people watch me, thousands of eyes scrutinizing, though they cheer for my return, cajole me to dance and join the merriment. There are eager hands all over, pulling me in every direction, but they do not move and move me enough to remove me from the woman's gaze. Listen, can you not hear them as they welcome you home? Your kind, your kind, our kind. Our kind being children from the street, basically. Oh, does she want to bring him back to a simpler lifetime? A lifestyle? You're one of us, my love. 
We are bonded by the blood we share. Are you related? If I thought the voices were overwhelming before, it is nothing compared to how they are now. Their voices are loud, speaking in unison and echoing ever on in this speaking in unison and the echoing ever on in the spaces of my head. They welcome me back as I've always belonged. As if I've always belonged. As if I was meant to be here in the first place. They call me all these titles and names they do not belong to me, and that man's face. The one with the empty eyes flashes again before me. Once Pleadingly. Like a new memory having burned itself in my mind. I have to struggle for air when I come back to myself. My I have to struggle for air when I come back to myself after. I'm not. This isn't. The welcomes turn into screams at my protest. Pain and desperate pleas for my help, telling me that this is my duty to stay. Telling me that I belong among them. To them. Gentle touches turn near threatening, the warning scratches and the bearing of teeth by predators before they truly mean someone. My mouth goes dry as I struggle to speak some sense in this hallucinatory madness, but I don't get the chance as they drown out my voice. Our Lord, my prince. At her words, there is a compulsion to stay. Though my heart races in my chest, the fear I should be experiencing refusing refuses to register in my head. Mind and body war with each other, nearly tearing me in two. Oh, you finally returned to us. The compulsion to walk into her arms is strong. Whispers in my head tell me to go to her. They say that she is safety. She is home and heart. We have been waiting for so long. But repulsed at these thoughts, I wrench away and turn with a small gasp. Without hesitation, I start to make a run for it. I nearly falter when an angry shriek pierces the ear, inhumane and monstrous. I don't dare look back. I just run. I didn't care if the, I didn't care if this is a drug-induced hallucination or not. Just run. Out of the ballroom. And out of the parlor, evening. It's only then I bother to look back, hoping and praying to the god I scorn that I did not pursue me. That it did not pursue me. I would have run all the way out of the mansion too if only someone didn't get in my way. This is where we meet feathers. I collide. Oh, okay, no! I was going to press the journal, but I missed, and this, uh, let's see here. I collide with a body much larger than mine and fall back to the ground, head spinning as I look up at the stained glass. Ooh. Let's see. Alone, Luke heard voices coming from the nearby ballroom. When he decided to investigate, he was assaulted by memories not of his own. And at the center of it, the same woman who appeared before him the day before. Turning my head to the side replaces the colorful sight with a pair of shiny black wash shoes. Fatigue fills every inch of my being then, making me refuse to get up. Meanwhile, a familiar head of ginger hair looks down at me in bemusement. You really must look where you're going if you insist on running about. Do tell, where is the fire? Oh, thank God you're here! I do hope you don't have a concussion. Can you count backwards from 15 to 1 for me? 15, 14, 3, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, fuck you! Oh, fuck off, you wanker! Just help <laughs> me up! I do not think insulting me if you do have a concussion is a smart decision. But no, really. 15 to 1. That woman, she was here. I told you to keep an eye out for her. The other man offers an arm and pulls me up to my feet then. The other man? Why don't you call him Johans? But before I can storm off and pull him into the ballroom, he anchors me down with one hand on my shoulder and the other touching the back of my head. No bruising or bump. That still does not mean that you don't have a concussion. If you are too lazy to count backwards, 
Can you tell me your full name? Where are you currently? We don't have <laughs> Lucille Mitchell Wright, and this is the <laughs> Ermine God bloody fucking foyer. But we don't have time for this. You must make and have the time to make sure you are not broken in the head. I have already sent security to scour the whole house when I saw you running out of the parlor, Doomkopf. If the woman is here, they will have her. You will only be slowing them down if you plan to interfere. When he points that out, I realize that there are guards starting to filter into the house as we speak with some some already searching the nearby rooms. Armed and uniformed men go out in pairs. Armed and uniformed men go about in pairs, making it so that the house is in a flurry of activity. He lets go of me then, with the knowledge that I'm not going to kneel over anytime soon. I was hoping that you would be tired from dealing with the young miss on my return. Instead, you come running and hit your head. Such a troublesome boy. Shall I be carrying you to bed, too? I can manage just fine on my own. Though I don't see how I can sleep until that woman is caught. It'll be easier to keep you safe in your quarters. This is twice we've known the woman to break in. I think we can safely presume that you hold her interest. He says it as a matter of fact in a tone that broke no argument. Not like I'll argue if it means I'm kept safe. The two of us hurry upstairs, though we remain watchful and aware of any potential threats to my person. We make it to the master bedroom without any trouble though, and two of the security are left outside the door. No problem at all. Not until we get inside. Oh no, what's happening inside? Johan's eyes scan the room wildly, a look of dread on his usually stoic face. And I don't understand for a moment, looking around the bedroom, it's empty. But then, I realize... Miss Hanna, she came home with you from the hospital, didn't she? She's supposed to be here. I sent one of the maids to accompany her here, to let her rest. Yeah, now there is something actually brumming outside. Car. I feel the color drain from my face when he raises a hand to stop me from charging out there. Stay. I'm not staying in here while Hana stays out there. Yeah, that's the thing. He loves Hana, but Hana doesn't really love you anymore, does she? And the guy that she does love is dead, uh, with remains of her his body parts under your bed. She's been sleeping on uh, Sack's corpse. No, they haven't gone to sleep yet. One of the guards will find her and bring her here. And what if they don't? What if that woman gets to her first? What if she already has her? That's not possible. You can't promise that. It's no second thought as I reach under my side of the bed and pull out one of my knives. I have no doubt that the other man can take me on if we were both unarmed. But with this, I can even the field, or at least deter him from escalating the situation and risking hurting either of us. I'm going out there to look for Hana, and you're either with me or you aren't. I'm not risking Hana, and I'm not leaving her alone. Still, like a stubborn mule, if he refuses to budge from the door. It's a withering look on him that I try to match. One that, somehow, I am losing fast to, even with him not saying a word yet. Can you see yourself in the mirror right now? You are in no proper state to go looking for anyone. Hmm. If it will make you happy, I will do the looking. And this is where you encounter Feathers and puts him in a chokehold. But please, and don't make me repeat this. Stay where it's safe where security can find you. We already have one person to be worried about. Please don't add another one to it. Perhaps it is his tone. In spite of his general disdain for virtually everything that has to do with me, I'd like to think that uh, over the years he has grown to care for Hana at least. Much as I loathe to admit this, I trust him with her safety over any servant in this house. So, an acquiescence. You're two hours stroking. I don't think it'll take that long to find one missing woman in this house. Two hours. Any more than that, and I'm going out there. Of course. Despite his words, he lingers. If I didn't know any better, I'd say he wants to make sure I get in that damn bed and sleep before he turns away from me. What am I? A child watching me and treating me like one. It's the reason why we will never get along. 
What are you waiting for? And the knife? The knife stays. Very well. Only then does he seem to get the hint. With a nod he leaves, locks then closes the door behind him. For a moment they still hear his voice he, while he gives the guards outside firm instructions, then a hush as soon as he departs and the, his footsteps fade away. One that doesn't quite last. As quickly as the silence settles, lightning flashes across the sky, followed immediately by the loud boom of thunder. And with that, let's read the next journal update. Bumping into Luke after his fight, uh, f after his flight from the ballroom, Johannes quickly ushered the paranoid man to his room, while the house's security lo looked for the trespasser. Trespasser only to be greeted by a room devoid of Hana, who was supposed to have arrived with the butler. And that wanker strikes so dangerously close that I can feel the electricity in the air. Why, the, the, the lightning strike is the wanker. The power goes out and not a second later, and I feel as if I'm being mocked by whatever greater power there is. All is deathly still for a moment, but soon the rain starts once again. Far heavier than the light drizzle from this morning, it's pitter patter hitting hard against this place's roof. Despite the noise, I find myself drawn to my bed, exhausted, hoping for a little nap. I'm safe here. Hana will be safe too. Shrokken will find her, and when I w when I wake, she'll be here. It does not take long. Once my head hits the pillow, in a matter of minutes, darkness claims me bringing with it laughter and whispers of a twisted love from a long time ago. Uh, who are you? St stay away! What the fuck was that? Sweet dreams, my love. It'll be over soon. <laughs> November 1st, Tuesday. And that is where I will cut off for today's episode, and this year's episode, in fact. It's slightly shorter than I want it to be, but stopping right at the between two dates is always a perfect place to stop. I will see you guys in two weeks' time, I believe it is. And Merry Christmas to you all, Happy New Year, and remember... Just because you're not the main character, it doesn't mean you're not important. Goodbye, everyone.